morning guys so I'm done another dawn session down here snuck out of the house um, didn't sleep brilliantly I'm not sure if it's because I'm anxious of what's going on in the world or whether I'm just excited about block printing with you again uh, I have so enjoyed all the um, response and printing that you guys have done and sent in so lovely please keep it coming it's just been so uplifting um, and I'm able to share it as well so hopefully you all have been seeing what some of you have done um, so I know you're desperate by the sounds of things to start printing onto fabric so this morning I'm going to give you very few tips to get you going there's so much I've realized there's so much that I can um, be doing over videos um, I've got this tiny little piece of white fabric here so we discussed last time about using old things in our house that we've got right now um, might be an old pillowcase old sheets are so nice to print on um, I'm gonna upcycle the pillowcase on this video but before I do, I just want to talk about fabric. Um, when you're printing on fabric, a few things to bear in mind. One, they often can have oils and things in if they're new. Um, and so always wash your fabric first, wash it at the highest temperature it can go at, and then obviously um, let it dry completely. You can't print onto wet fabric, so be, let it completely dry. And then give it a really good iron. The flatter and cleaner your piece of fabric when you print, the cleaner print you're gonna get. And then when you come to your table, there are a couple of ways that you can keep your piece of fabric in place. Um, I have got a piece of uh, wool felt on my table. It just captures all the, the bits of paint and things like that. It works really well. So I am able to pin the fabric down onto the table and I can put a pin into every corner. That's how they do it in India. Um, and I push the pin into the middle when I'm pulling it down, pushing it in. And that holds it on really, really well. So that's one way of doing it. It's also um, the best way to do it because you're going to take the pins out, put them back into your pin cushion and not create any waste or anything. But there is another way, maybe not as eco-friendly, um, but it might be better for your children, I was thinking. But um, trusty masking tape, love masking tape. And you just tape it down onto the table. It's also a really nice way that if you want to keep a nice clean white border with whatever you're printing, then you can cover up the bit of fabric that you don't want to print onto. This is probably a safer option for children. Um, but yes, you can keep a nice square edge around the fabric. There we go. And that's great. Your piece of fabric is not going anywhere. It's all smoothed down really flat. Now um, uh, everyone's asking what paint to use on our fabric. We, do you know I've never tried with just emulsion paint, I don't know, but what I do know, and again it's not something I do, but I think we could all try this and share our thoughts, is that you can print on fabric with chalk based paints. They're really accessible these days, so many people make the chalk based paint. and. Amazingly, once you heat set it, it does adhere to the fabric. I probably wouldn't recommend it maybe for something like a tea towel that you're going to wash all the time, but if you're just doing a cushion cover or some fabric for your curtains that aren't going to be washed a lot, then I think that chalk paint would be completely fine to use and actually it's just really the same thing we were doing yesterday. Um, otherwise, the paints to use are, there's no real such thing as sort of block printing paint. There are a few brands that do it. It feels like we've still got deliveries going on so actually we're not quite as restricted as I initially thought we might be but you can get block printing paint or you can buy screen printing paint and I use a screen printing paint um, I use this lovely soil association one um, we have just started to work um, with making our own ones so as I said before we've got some kits online so actually if you really want to get going with proper wooden blocks and have all the tools ready for you and you can't find the bits and pieces at home, do order one of our blocks. We sent out loads yesterday. So that's really great. Thank you very much. And we're trying to put some more together, I think, today because I know everyone was nervous about kids at home and what to do. And we definitely need that crafting section in our home education timetable. Um, my daughter's already written her timetable. She thinks this is all going to be great. Um, so... Yes, so here we go. So in the in my kits and what I have in my studio as well is this little wooden tray. But again, it totally could be some kind of plastic pot, hummus tray, an old lid, anything. And then I could continue using a paintbrush, but 
but I actually like using one of these as well. Oh God, it's so cold in here, I can see my breath, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it is a really early and I don't have any heating in my studio, so I'm really sorry if you can see my, my lovely um, fresh breath. Anyway, here's a sponge on a little stick and these are really, really great for loading up the paint and I think for children as well make it a lot easier. So this way you can literally dab your, your um, sponge into the paint. And I've got my same potato from yesterday. They dry out a bit, but actually I think it, it, it's rather nice. Okay, and I'm just gonna, yet again, apply my paint. Um, now, when you're printing a very small piece of fabric, it's really a good idea to start in the middle of your piece of fabric and then work your way out so that you get a lovely overall pattern. This could be a hanky for grandpa or something. Um, if I started, normally we print, we start in the top left-hand corner. I don't really know what's going to happen to the pattern by the time I've gone off to the right hand side. So I'm going to start right dead in the middle of my bit of fabric. And again, another good trick for making your centre point is by folding your fabric into four. Um, so that you've got a nice crease in the middle. Okay. And away we go. Same as last time. Think about where you're going to lay your block down. Um, look at the, look over the top. Uh, don't commit until you're really sure. And once you're you're certain that all your blocks are nice, dead straight, exactly where you want it, then give it a good push down. Put some music on if you're in the if it's in the evening and you're on your own. Get a glass of wine. Just really clear everything else away and get all your bits and pieces ready, and just sort of disappear into this lovely method, remembering to reload your block between each print. I know it feels really slow and um, tedious, but it's that's what's so lovely about it. It is slow and we do all need to slow down. I think we're gonna have to now. Okay, and I've nearly done my first line. Just do one more over here. I'm then going to work, the next place I'm going to put it is up in the top, I'm going to fill that area, that area, and carry on working around. Um, I haven't worked out a brilliant position for my camera, so I know you can't see this, so I'm going to turn it off now and finish printing, and then show you the finished piece, and then I'm going to show you the pillowcase that I'm doing and how I'm going to do that as well. Okay, great. So I finished my little piece of square cotton, I printed the blueprint and I thought it needed something else, so I've actually carved another potato have put a stripe into it and I have reverted back to my favourite colour pink and it's given it a really nice pop of colour so I'm going to take off the masking tape now and um, show you what I've done. Once this is dried properly I'm then going to set it with an iron, a dry iron and it's the heat that sets the dye to the fabric so that then you can wash it and it really, the temperature you wash it out really depends on the fabric. So obviously if it's linen, you've got to wash it more carefully. With this cotton, I can wash it up to 40 degrees and the colour holds really, really nicely. So that's not a problem at all. So here we go. Pretty cute little pocket square. And I could obviously now go to a bigger piece of fabric and make cushions or, you know, tablecloths, napkins. The world's your oyster. It's just a little piece just to get you going. Uh, what I've seen requested most was upscaling pillowcases so I'm going to go on now and show you my way of, of decorating a, a boring old pillowcase so see you in the next one thanks